It's stone, so you know this game's serious. Oh, and I guess stone doesn't twinkle. No. Gabriel Knight, Sins of the Fathers. Yep. Spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah, some fathers exist and they sinned. <laughs> Intro? Uh, absolutely. Just our seats here. <clears throat> it's a bonfire. Huh? Pilgrim did. Crying. Somebody in the fire. Oh no. Kitty! Uh, a premonition? An artifact, a lion, a snake. Sploosh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just in just in case. You're like, oh, a serious Siri game. Oh, very serious. <laughs> <laughs> Quite serious. Nightmare. Mm. <coughs> and yes, those are the <laughs> Um, CD drive whirling in the background. Authentic. Oh, yeah, we're doing everything old school today. So I guess we don't need to watch all the credits. You could probably click. Yeah, I suppose the music gets us in the t mood, but... So does this. Gnarlings. Mm -hmm. Day one. Blood. I dreamt of blood upon the shore, of eyes that spoke of sin. The lake was smooth and deep and black, as was her scented skin. <laughs> Romantic. It's squeaky by queens. Misproofing. Great sound. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I bet. Just a minute. It lives, I see. Do you want to speak with Lolita? Urgent canceling gesture. <laughs> I'm sorry, but Gabriel is allowed. Oh, I mean, he's out. Yeah, if he ever comes back, I'll tell him. You know, you could do shot. better. I know I don't know you, but you could do better. Pours Good it morning. down his gullet. The phone's been ringing off the hook all morning. Let me know when you want your messages. Yeah. <laughs> Gee, you're lively. Did you have another nightmare last night? Sort of. Mm-hmm. Sort of. I told you it's that voodoo book you're researching. That stuff can seriously screw up your karma. I'm sure that's it. Maybe I should write a horror novel on passive resistance instead. <sighs> so don't sleep. It's your body. Anyway, your handheld tape recorder came today. Really? Great. I can't wait to see what human rights you violate with this one. <laughs> I can't wait to violate them. For example, if you would just let me... And I located hmm. some local voodoo references for you. Dixieland Drugstore and the Historical Museum of Voodoo. Both are right here in French Quarter. How would I ever manage without you? You? Give me a break. <coughs> the devil himself couldn't change you. Well, if the devil had great legs, perhaps. Like yours. And a riveting personality, I'm sure. Well, if you need <laughs> any more research done, just ask. It's not as though we're swamped with customers. Okay. First things first. Um, I suppose, it, yeah. Go up to the bar, and we gotta go to settings. And uh, text on. And let's turn narrator voice off. Because the narrator in this game is a little... Uh, she's an acquired taste. Okay. <laughs> and I think we could just read it ourselves out loud. Um, so here you are, Gabriel Knight. He is a bookshop owner. He is an aspiring novelist. Uh, he writes horror books. And he is currently researching a uh, voodoo book, and it's coinciding with some voodoo-themed mur murders that are happening in uh, New Orleans. 
So Grace just gave us some uh, leads on places where we could research voodoo, and the shop is ours to explore. Just look around a bit then. Mm -hmm. Newspaper seems like a good beginning. Today's newspaper is on the whatever. Times Picayune, dated June 18th, 1993. The front page is an article about the voodoo murders. The article says that the victims are all identified as members of the underworld. The general public of New Orleans is in no danger. Uh huh. The police claim that the so called voodoo trappings found at the crime scenes are fake, a scare tactic, and that the murders are not associated with any genuine practitioners. Gabriel also scans the Aquarius horoscope for the day. <laughs> Potential storms ahead. Proceed with caution and do not get involved with anything new at this time. Right. <laughs> Sometimes the CD takes a while to seek. That gave us a point. Yes, our first point. Oh, magnifying glass. It looks slightly All brighter. Five pixels Mind of if it. I borrow the magnifying glass. No, Sherlock. Just bring it back when we get the next estate shipment. No problem. What is this? I'm going to take the tweezers for a bit. Tweez tweezers? Good. You're beginning to look a little scruffy. <laughs> Just trying to make you feel at home. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. Books on the table have been chosen for their special appeal. Recent fiction by the biddies. In other words, nothing written by Gabriel. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got coffee, coffee. Under the window are reference books, dictionaries, foreign language dictionaries, quotation books, and others. Gabriel borrows them often when he's writing. Mm -hmm. Trench coat. Dramatic, isn't it? Gabriel didn't eat for three weeks after splurging on that coat. He has a thing for black leather. Uh huh. The welcome mat is more. <laughs> it's a welcome mat. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> um, Second hand, not because of stampede of customers. The ladder provides access to the uppermost shelves of the bookcase. Probably nothing in particular up there, but. Uh, there's a. That's pick up. Oh, okay. Um, use is the next one over. Or the gears is rather use. This one uses more advanced, uh, yeah. Oh, wow, we gotta do something about that walk speed. <laughs> I can't do that until he's done oh, moving. Lovely. Yeah. If you try to look down my shirt one more time, I'm leaving. Hell, just trying to refresh my memory. I know what you're trying to refresh, and it isn't your memory. Get down. So, uh, Gibraltar's kind of a creep. Hmm. You know, complex man. Uh, speed's right there at the top. Right about there, yeah. Test this out. Yeah, there we go. Um, looky, looky. Grace keeps her art supplies here. Three snakes in a skull. Gabriel's father painted it. Hmm. Okay, well, the book rack contains co uh, cookbooks, true crime, puzzle books, and inspired combination. Notes. St. George's books could use some serious renovation. All right, well, let's ask about our messages. Mm -hmm. uh, uh. <laughs> Takes a while to get used to. Got a minute, Grace? What's up? Do you have messages for me? Dana called, <laughs> and uh, Susie left a message about a lawsuit. Carson. Okie dokie. There's more when you want them. Do you have more messages for me? Your grandmother called. I keep meaning to get over there. What did she say? Did she sound good? She sounded great, and we had a nice little chat about you. Grace. Don't worry. I didn't go into detail about your cardinal sins. Not that anything about you could surprise her. 
She adores you anyway. She's my girl. But she said to remind you to stop by and go through your father's things. Hmm. Okay. Points. Mm-hmm. Voodoo What murders. do you know about the voodoo murders? Just what I read in the paper, same as you. Voodoo. What can you tell me about voodoo? voodoo? I didn't know much of anything about it. Until you started researching it for your book. Now I know that it's active in the city. There's that shop and museum. It can clearly be dangerous in the museum. wrong hands. Mm -hmm. You should be careful investigating it. What can you tell me about New Orleans? Well, I've only been here two months. But I love it. It's so much more alive than any place I've been. It feels like anything's possible here. Tell me about yourself, Grace. Yeah, right, Knight. <laughs> I mean it. What do you want to know? A little defensive. How do you like working at St. George's Books? Well, it's not exactly a huge intellectual challenge. Although the math in your record books could confuse Einstein. <laughs> Still, I love old books, and it's a nice way to pay the bills while I explore the city for a summer. If you ever pay me, that is. Okay. How come we haven't gone out yet? I'm still waiting around for that lobotomy. <laughs> <laughs> Creepy. What do you do after work? I either go to my oil painting class or my Tai Chi. You know that. You know, you can go overboard with this improving yourself stuff. You don't want to alienate us mere mortals. I suppose I should just allow my mind and body to atrophy. Works for me. <laughs> How old are you? Old enough to know about men like you. <laughs> Just tell me anything at all. I just got my master's in history and classics. My folks wanted me to go on right away for my PhD, but 18 years of school was enough. I needed a break. Nothing, I guess. Never mind. Suit yourself. Um, maybe she has more messages? Do you have more messages for me? Here's a strange one. You got a call from someone named Wolfgang Ritter. He said he was calling from Germany. He told me it was urgent. Maybe you should give him a call. Call Germany? Like hell. If it's really important, he'll call back. Well, fine. Let's just hope he's not with the German lottery for pitiful American <laughs> authors. Do you have more messages for me? <laughs> Your friend Detective Mosley called. Talking of visiting. Especially with you. What do you want? He left an interesting message. He told me to tell you that his mother's maiden name is Humphrey. Oh, that's H-U-M-P-H-R-E-Y. Fascinating. And that he left some photos for you at the station. At the front desk. It's about time. Gabriel, those photos wouldn't have anything to do with the voodoo murders, would they? Surely not. Now, why would you say something like that? Because I know you. You're getting privileged information, aren't you? Did you tell him you'd put him in your new voodoo book? A writer has certain obligation to his readers, you know. Gabriel, you know you'll never put him in your book. Your main character is a female orthodontist. <laughs> He's gonna be reincarnated as a pit bull if he keeps screwing with your karma. As long as it's a male pit bull with a really big that's enough. Thanks. Anyway, that's all the messages. Thank God. Hmm? Request research. We have nothing to request at the moment, I guess. Not really. Nothing comes to mind. <coughs> we have, like, <coughs> three places to visit, I guess. Mm, yeah, possibly more. Um, why don't we check the back room really quick? <laughs> yeah. 
Little Cold and Bubbling Breaches is all about Gabriel's fridge ever, sir, ever has in it. Bills from last Christmas gather dust on the door. Hey, it's kind of like my place. <laughs> dust bomb is cheap but functional. Typewriter is beginning to accumulate cobwebs. <laughs> Nah. It takes a while for the CD to seek on these uh. voice lines sometimes. Oh, so he has written a novel or two before. Office, studio, library. Mardi Gras, biggest party. 38 pairs of mismatched socks. Flashlight. Hmm. Handy dandy. What's wrong with that? Come here. There we go. <laughs> nice indeed. Now I have a magnifying glass and a flashlight. Legit Scooby Doo. All my clothes look the same, so why change them? Indeed. Anything in the bathroom? Something in the cabinet is brightly colored. I'll take this hair gel. <laughs> <laughs> Never know when you need a touch up. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I don't think we need any beads or anything like that. Oh, those are beads. All right. We could try looking in the refrigerator. Gabriel, shut the refrigerator, please. I could smell it from here. <laughs> Women. Well, I think that's about it. Phone. We don't have anyone to call, so. Alrighty. I'm out of here. Try not to sell out the store while I'm gone. Uh huh. Uh, I was about to say, how do we know where we might need to go? But there's a cathedral, Jackson Square. So we can go to the police station. Uh, somebody left Voodoo Museum and Voodoo Store. Mm -hmm. I'd say we go to the police station to pick up the photographs left for us. Ooh, Ooh my goodness, that's fancy. What does that go? A legit video clip. Mosley's Precinct. Death Sergeant looks like a poster boy for heart disease. 30 extra pounds between his armpits and his belt, and a complexion, the consistency of great oatmeal. In other words, a typical product of good southern cooking. <laughs> well, might as well talk to him. He's filling out a crossword. What can I do you for? Polite. Tell me about yourself. That's not <laughs> what I meant. <laughs> me? I'm the death sergeant Freck Wine. Freck? That's right. You got a problem with that? <coughs> not at all. Hmm. I'm here to see Detective Mosley. He's out at a crime scene. Sorry. Hmm. There's a crime scene. I was supposed to pick up some photos from Detective Mosley at the front desk. Is that right? And who are you? My name is Knight. Gabriel Knight. Yeah. I got something for you, all right. As soon as you're done talking, I'll give it to you. Such Everybody's creepy. <laughs> Pretty much. Where is the crime scene? Is it related to the voodoo murder? Crime scene information is police confidential. We don't need any more looky-loos than are probably already there. Hmm. It's coming in. Come on, <laughs> you can tell me where the crime scene is. Look, I know the papers got everybody stirred up about these killings, but that don't make it public information. Back off. So this is a new voodoo murder, then. <laughs> I didn't say that. You'll read all about it in the papers tomorrow, I'm sure. Okay. What do you know about the voodoo murders? I'm not allowed.
want to give out information on police cases. Well, I think that's about what we can hope to get from Officer Frick. Here's that envelope for you, Gabriel Knight. Thanks. Twelve points already. Hmm, there's the envelope. Envelope for Mosley in plain manila. Feels pretty light. But you... That's the reading. Gabriel's name on it, misspelled. Gabriel opens the manila envelope and finds two photographs. Yeesh. Uh, look on it for further information. One of the photos from Mosley's is an official voodoo murders crime scene shot. A graphic close-up of the victim. Okay. Photograph of Mosley was apparently taken upon his graduation for the police academy. He had hair then. <laughs> oh, and he, he, went, he gave us that photo to put in the book to credit yeah. him. Gabriel can see it just fine without magnification. All right. All right. Well, yeah. I guess Think that's it for now. Yeah, we did what we set out to do. Okay. Well, well if, if we click um, to New Orleans map, zooms out even more, huh? Mm hmm. We can visit Grandmother Knight's house. Very good. We'll go through uh, all those things. Gabriel, I'm so glad you stopped by. Sorry it's been a while, Grandma. Not at all. Give us a kiss. Now come and sit down. Tell me how you're doing. <clears throat> I bet it smells really stuffy in there. Can we talk, Gran? <laughs> <laughs> of course, my boy. How can I help? I don't know if she'd know much about voodoo. Tell me about our family. Who would you like to hear about? Your granddad, your father, or your mother? Hmm. Tell me something about granddad. Your granddad immigrated to America when he was 21. He worked his way through school, met and married me, and we had your father, Philip. Tell me about my father. Your father was my only child. How we adored him. Philip suffered from terrible nightmares, just like your granddad did. They were two peas in a pod. Gabriel does. Dun, dun, dun. Tell me about my mother. Your mother was Margaret Templeton when your father met her. She came from a very wealthy Creole family in New Orleans. She was beautiful and reckless. She was madly in love with your father, of course, but I also think she liked defying her family. Since you're so interested in family history these days, why don't you go by St. Louis Cemetery Number 1 and visit the family tomb? It would be a sweet gesture. Maybe I will. Hmm. Um, we can... You know, you get prettier every time I see you. Oh, you. <laughs> we can ask, uh, find out more about these relatives by clicking the uh, names again. Tell me about my father. When Philip met your mother, it was love at first sight. They were married two weeks later. Never looked at a girl seriously until then. And he looked at plenty. You have your father's way with women, Gabriel. And your granddad's. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's 
So Phillips is Father Harrison's. Inspector. Tell me something about Granddad. Your granddad supported me and your father with bookkeeping. I tell you what, though, he hated every minute of it. Didn't really like bookkeeping one bit. Maybe that was why he had the worst luck with jobs. The night he'd come home afraid to tell me he'd lost another, <laughs> and I would tell him it didn't matter to me. But he felt ashamed, Gabriel. Tell me about my father. I wanted to just lay down and die when he and your mother were killed in that car crash when you were only eight. Oh, jeez. It was the thought of taking care of you that kept me going, Gabriel. The police say your father swerved off the road after being frightened by something. Perhaps a deer in the road or a wild cat. In the dreams. Mm. Tell me about my mother. Your mother's family refused to give her money after the marriage. All she had <coughs> left was a modest trust fund from her great aunt, who happened to like Philip. The remainder of your mother's trust fund became yours when she died. That's what you used to open your bookshop. Tell me about my father. Your granddad wanted Philip to have a normal life. He was obsessed by that thought. He pushed Philip to go to law school. Philip was driven to art. He painted almost in a daze. He would get so inside himself when he worked. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Father is a painter. Tell me about my father. He always hated it that it was Margaret's money that supported the three of you when his painting couldn't. I kept telling him. Try something more cheerful, like a landscape <laughs> or two. But he couldn't do it. His work was just too dark and disturbing for the public, you know. Hmm. He was the one who painted that three snakes in the skull. Tell me about my father. Thing in the I don't bookshop. know what else to tell you, dear. Tell me about my mother. The Templetons are all gone now. Every last one of them. They never wanted anything to do with us, of course. What a waste. <laughs> Tell me something about Granddad. Harrison was only 36 when he died. Your father was eight years old at the time. Mm. Your Granddad mm. was hit by a streetcar in the business district. Took me nearly a year to believe he was really gone. I'm sorry, Gran. I know you are, dear. Family curse. Something. Have you baked any of your incredible molasses <laughs> and pies lately? No, dear. But you let me know when you want some, and I'll whip up half a dozen. That's a lot of pie. <laughs> Tell me about yourself. Me? Oh, surely you have something more interesting to talk about. Oh, come on, Gran. All right, dear. What do you want to hear? Oh, geez, a whole new tree. Mm. Yeah, ask what you'd want. I'd say none of this is really relevant to the beginning of the game. I don't know. What do you do all day? <laughs> yeah. What do you do all day? You know how I love to knit and work in my garden. I also take long walks. It's the only way to keep an old body like mine from stiffening up. You're not old. Oh, don't be foolish. I'm older than the hills. <laughs> How you feeling these days? Fit as a fiddle, and don't you worry your head about it. Oh, nothing. Never mind. Oh. Mm -hmm. What do you know about the voodoo <laughs> murders? Oh, dear. And I don't want to. I sometimes wonder what this world is coming to. Alrighty, well, I... Yeah. I think that's about it. Um, so, we need to go up to the attic and look at our uh, father's things, I guess. Uh, it should be knitting. I'm going to go up to the attic, Gran. Be careful of the dust. Be careful of the dust? 
Okay. Mm -hmm. Christmas lights. Yeah, you know. And a hat and a strange little stuffed animal. Elaborate mechanical oh. clock, probably of German origin, is among the started treasures of the area. Well, we're gonna have to take it off. But... Okay, well, I'm gonna take the clock. Can I... Can I... There's a push icon. Okay. There you go. Move it. All right. <laughs> Trunk contains some old clothes, including a pair of leather shorts. Woohoo! Lederhosen. <laughs> Aren't those called Lederhosen? Serious hiking boots and more of Harrison Knight's German books. Just what I need. And a bundle of love letters between Harrison and Rebecca. Mm hmm? Yeah. Probably don't want those. <laughs> okay. Um, I guess nothing really important in there. I don't think there's anything in that trunk that would interest anybody but my gran. Okay. Mm, anything else? Ooh. Mm. It's a clock. Let's find it. Hmm. hmm. I think there is something about this clock, but I don't think we know what we need to yet. Perhaps we can find something else in the attic. Okay. Let's see. Back of knickknacks. Been up here for five years. Oh, you still oh. got the magnifying glass out. Well, it, it doesn't matter. It, it's not an interact icon. Nothing I want in here. Okay. This, Whoops, sorry. I think I'll leave that up here. Mm, what's Gabriel standing next to? Oh, there's a book. I think I'll take Daddy's sketchbook with me. Ooh. Sketchbook. Dang. Uh-huh. <laughs> Images haunt the pages of Philip Knight's sketchbook the way they must have haunted his mind. Okay, great. Lovely. Jeez. So, images touch a deep chord in Gabriel. So familiar are they that he finds it hard to believe they are from his own subconscious. Mm -hmm. so, what do we see? Oh. Three linked rings, like a circle or an eye, three snakes, some demonic creature, a cat, again, maybe on fire with this three rings, three snakes. Is this three snakes biting its tail? Or not a big cat face? Mm. So I'm getting like lions or panthers and three snakes and three rings. Mm. Cool. Um... Okay. Maybe we have what we need to figure out the clock. Yeah, take the peek here. Oh. Uh, what are these symbols around it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There it is. Ring of six symbols around the face of the clock. A sword, a sun, an angel, a noose, an eclipse, and a dragon. Hmm. dragon. Okay. I guess that... Sword, sun... Angel, noose, eclipse, dragon. Yeah, I think this is... It's Dad's clock, or... His... Mm -hmm. No, his... No, it's his grandfather's clock. Yeah. Immigrated. The noose seems upside down. The sun and the eclipse are opposed from each other, as well as the dragon and the angel. Yeah, actually, I think we need more information. Oh! Ooh, you can move it. What if I put the dragon on three? Can you move the... Um... 
Put it on beginning of there. Yeah, I can change the time and rotate the dials. Okay. Well, three dragon. Uh, there were three snakes. Yeah. So maybe it'd be threes, right? But something with the uh, rotation of where they. How about just set it for three o'clock? Let's see. Hmm. How about those symbols? What if you put... Um, dragon's most snake-like, so... Oh, we set it for noon. Yeah. Because... I don't know. <laughs> Granddaddy, you old fox. I don't get it. Hmm. <laughs> Three dragons, three snakes. Three yeah, o'clock. but why it... Oh, but yeah. That's... Not sure why the dragon would be up at 12. But I guess you gotta do the three and the top of the hour. Yeah. Alright, what's in here? Ooh, two a photograph and a letter. <coughs> photograph. Hmm. The old photograph shows Gabriel's grandfather and two other men that Gabriel has not identified. Ooh. His grandfather and someone else. Letter addressed to Heinz Ritter, whoever that is. Open oh. letter? There's a there's a read icon. Oh. Well, they're trying yeah, to be advanced did. with the options here. Yeah. The game was criticized for it. <laughs> <laughs> Letters written in German. Gabriel determines what you can. Sent from a place called Schloss Ritter in Rittersburg, Berg, West Germany. Letter is addressed to Mein Sohn Heinz and signed Wilhelm Ritter. One of the recurring words thrown throughout the letter is the word Schottenjäger. Hmm. The only other thing that Gabriel can decipher about the letter is a sense of urgency in the handwriting and in the heavy use of a quill tip, bold strokes, and underlining. Hmm. Wonder if Graham knows anything about this. I think perhaps we should ask her. All of a sudden, my walking speed is. <laughs> Depends on how much uh, stuff is going on in the room, I guess. <laughs> Take a load off. That's it. Take a load off, hon. Can we talk, Graham? Of course, my boy. How can I help? Hmm. Um, shot in Jaegers, but something we learned. Heinz Heinz Ritter, too. Do you know anyone named Heinz Ritter? Heinz Ritter? Oh, Gabriel, where did you hear that name? I found a letter in Granddaddy's clock. I promised I'd never tell you or your father. But I suppose it doesn't matter now. <coughs> tell me, Gran. Jeez. Your granddad's name was Heinz Ritter before he came to America. He changed it to Harrison Knight legally when he arrived. Hmm. Hmm. Ask her more. <laughs> I think Heinz Ritter again will. Why did Granddad change his name? I don't know. I tried to ask him about his family, his life before America. But he didn't want to talk about it. Hmm. He never even Too told me about his stepping? name change. <laughs> I found that one day when I saw his passport in a drawer. Since he obviously found it painful, I never questioned him about it. But I'm sure it wasn't trouble with the law. Your granddad was the best man I ever knew. As far as you knew. <laughs> Have you ever heard of a Schottenjäger? Schottenjäger? Schottenjäger. How odd, Gabriel. I haven't heard that word in years. My goodness, you've given me a chill. Your granddad used to say that sometimes in his sleep. Really? 
Do you know what it means? No, I'm afraid not. I asked him about it once. I don't think he answered me. Odd. Hmm. Hmm. Thanks, Grant. <laughs> She's not really an inquisitive person, is she? <laughs> she doesn't want to pry. Oh, yeah. Have you ever heard of a... I don't know what else to tell you. Anything else about Heinz Ritter? Didn't Granddad ever say anything about his past or his family? Only that his family was crazy and that he never wanted to see them again. Hmm. He believed in some family curse, thought that he could spare Philip and Philip's children from what he called old nightmares. Um, Whatever Harrison um. wanted to spare you, though, it cost him plenty. He never did sleep well, and he would often get a far away guilty look in his eyes. He was wrestling with something he thought he should be doing, some place he thought he ought to be. I don't know how he could think that he should be anywhere but with me and our child. It's a terrible way to live. Hmm. 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 Well, we could try showing her that photo. Or that letter. Mm -hmm. Does this mean anything to you, Grain? One in the middle is your grandfather. Those other two, I don't know. Hmm. Hmm. <coughs> Does this mean anything to you, Grain? Uh, no, dear. I'm afraid I don't speak a word of German. Hmm. She is helpful, just not with those. Hmm. Anyway, I think this is a uh, convenient time for us to end the episode and take a break. Certainly. Alright, we will be back in the next video. Ta-ta.